Welcome to Many Roads Traveled. Hi, I'm Tamara, and today it is episode 13. Woohoo! And we are off to Luxor, the ancient capital called Thebes. It's also the home to the world's greatest open air museum and the most famous burial, burial ground in the world. We're going to be covering about 800 miles today. That's going to take us up to 8,000 miles that we've done on our 30,000 mile road trip from Paris to Cape Town. So if this is your first episode, then you might want to go back to episode one so you can join me along the whole trip. Okay, so we're on uh, day 73 and we just left Siwa Oasis. We spent uh, just over a week there. So we're back in Cairo, back in our little home away from home, uh, Hotel Select. And right now we is me and my friend Casey, who I left Canada with to start this trip. No, didn't end it with him. <laughs> That's for sure. Not even close. <laughs> and we'd also had picked up um, a lovely guy, Duncan, British guy, uh, along the way. Day 73. So we get to back to Cairo, uh, head up to the Sudan embassy because we had applied for our Sudanese visa over two weeks ago. And just, you know, fingers crossed. Get, get to the Sudanese visa or embassy, sorry. And they're like, no maybe another week <laughs> it's just like, oh my god and we had no we knew that it wasn't even a guarantee we'd get the visa and i mean the whole point of the trip was to travel from paris to cape town by land so we really needed the sudanese visa uh, so we decided okay well we'll head down to luxor and, and spend some you know kill some time and plus obviously we wanted to go there <laughs> So the four of us headed out to Ramsey's train station to get our train tickets for Luxor. Went back to the select, packed up our stuff. Although we actually left, I think we just brought a little bag with us, like a day bag, and we left our big bag in storage there. Which is another little tip, which is great. Because if you're just doing like little, like going away for a couple of days or so, and you know you're coming back, you can often uh, leave your luggage there for free. You know, as long as you trust the place. <laughs> and we've been studying, you know, we spent enough nights there that we, they, they, they were great. Management was great. So yeah, so we uh, got to, headed to the train station, got our train, left at 7 p.m. that night. And we opted for second class seats, which were okay. They're really pretty comfortable. And if you're lucky enough, you could also swivel around the two seats in front of you so you can put your legs up. Don't think we had that on the way down, but we did have it on the way back. But of course, they don't keep, they didn't turn the lights off ever. <laughs> so didn't get much sleep. And arrived into Luxor on day 75 at 4.30 a.m. Not an optimal time to arrive in a new city. <laughs> However, there was a local guy there, this big fat guy. <laughs> he was really friendly, actually. And he said, oh, I own a hotel and it's called Happy Land. Do you want to come check it out? Well, how could you resist Happy Land? So yeah, we we went, a little dubious, but we went and yeah, it was really nice. It was super clean. There was a lovely rooftop patio and most importantly, it had hot showers, always good. And it was only like $2 each <laughs> a night. So that was even better. And then breakfast was only 50 cents. So wait, and you could uh, uh, eat it on the rooftop. So it was really nice. So yeah, we crashed till about 11 in the morning and then uh, got up and decided, you know, just have a little walk around town. So we hit up a few markets. Um, I finally found a dude to make my cartouche. And of course, I got the usual marriage proposal. <laughs> that happened a lot in Egypt, uh, which I, you know, refused. He wanted like 60 Egyptian pounds for the cartouche. I found it. I was like, what? No way. So I managed to talk him down to 28. So it was about three Egyptian pounds to the US dollar back then. Remember this is back in 1993. <laughs> uh, now I think it's about 16 Egyptian pounds to the US dollar. Anyway, so I got my cartouche, so I was super happy. Uh, yeah, and then we uh, went and grabbed uh, some dinner. And that was another thing, like Luxor was so expensive to, uh, compared to Cairo. And it was actually a lot hotter too. It was probably about five or six degrees hotter. So yes, we had a crappy dinner. So we decided, well, let's just buy a bottle of vodka. 
and uh, head to the rooftop and play some cards. So we did that to about two in the morning. And then on day 676, we were like, okay, today's going to be Feluca Day. So we rented a Feluca for the day. And a Feluca is an Egyptian boat. That it's made out of wood and it's got the, the big sail. Although they do have motors. Although our owner, Abdul, was a bit of an a-hole. But besides that, it was an amazing day. And also his boat was called the Happy Nile. So we were like, well, we're staying in Happy Land. Happy Nile, let's all be happy. <laughs> So we took off about 10 in the morning. Uh, there wasn't much wind, but because Abdul was so cheap, he wouldn't put the motor on. So the, there was two brothers he had working for him and they had to bloody row it. And it was like, it's a big boat. <laughs> so I felt sorry for them. But uh, we just, you know, chilled on the boat for a bit, you know, sailing down the Nile, super cool. And then we went across to the other side of the Nile to uh, the brother's family home and uh, for breakfast. So the mother made us some breakfast though it was not the best i have to say uh it was like rock hard bread buffalo cheese which smelled like smelly feet <laughs> uh some tomatoes and tea but they had some egyptian music on and i just got up and started dancing and the mother thought that was the funniest thing she'd ever seen <laughs> so it worked out okay so then we head back on the boat and now just a quick sponsor break People ask me all the time, how can you afford to travel so much? Well, affiliate marketing is one of them. And listen, my friend James put together an amazing done for you system, training, tools, email, follow-ups, everything's included. Best thing is it is free to join. And you could start making money from seven different income streams in this system in literally two minutes. Okay, so head on over to manyroadstravel.com slash rapid and you can get started today. All right, back to the show. And I was just chilling on the the, the, the the bow and just catching some rays and yeah, just sitting back and taking it all in really, you know, sailing down the Nile, pretty cool. And then we went to Crocodile Island, which had this really fancy resort with a pool. So we did try and sneak in, <laughs> but we got caught. So we tried, but no go. And then we went to Banana Island, which guess what? It had lots of sweet little bananas on there. So we got a big bunch of those for the, the get back, take back on the boat. And they were really good, actually. They're very sweet because they're, they're small. Uh, but then I said to Abdullah, I was like, well, I really want to swim in the Nile. I mean, he's like, uh, madam, there's like lots of crocodiles in the Nile. And I'm like, okay, well, that is a good valid point. I, I was like, so I can't swim in it? He's like, okay, well, we have to find somewhere that has very strong currents, kind of almost like, you know, when you get those mini tidal pools, like whirlpools in the in the rivers. So yeah, we found one of those and he's like, okay, this is the spot. And like, we looked around for Crocs, didn't see any. <laughs> and he's like, okay, now jump in this water net, like where it stay in this current bit and, and go. So jumped in, you know, spent maybe five, 10 minutes. I didn't want to push my luck. <laughs> but I got to swim in a croc infested Nile. <laughs> I don't know, I have a crazy bucket list. Uh, yeah, then we just got back on the boat and uh, just sailed some more and then watched a beautiful sunset. So yeah, it worked out to be a really, really great day because uh, we're on it from 10 a.m. till probably six-ish. Um, then we, of course, hit up our normal uh, koshery little restaurant. Now, koshery is like the Egyptian staple cheap meal too. But it's really, really good. <clears throat> and um, it's kind of made up of spiced lentils and rice and macaroni and with tomato sauce and uh, vegetables in there. And normally, like in Cairo, I think we paid like 50 cents or something. So, but it's Luxor. <laughs> so there was four of us, right? And then the bill comes to 24 Egyptian pounds. I was like, no way, not doing it. Because it should have been, like I said, about 10 maximum. So I managed to negotiate and got him down to 12. So he still made, made a bit more money off of us. Uh, and then we, of course, did the other usual thing we did was, yeah, go back for some more shisha pipes. So had that. So um, I was becoming, I still was getting massive head spins and not like feeling really high off the tobacco because I'd never smoked before. Uh, but it was a nice little buzz for sure. And then the, so the next day, 
everyone else is just being lame and just want to lay about. And I'm like, what? Like, we're in Luxor. There's so much to see and do here. So I just took off on myself and decided to walk, which was about 5K to uh, uh, Karnaka, which is like, uh, it's, a, it's an ancient uh, Egyptian temple, which is dedicated to Amun-Ra. <clears throat> and Amun-Ra was basically the supreme ruler of the universe. And why they built it was so they could have contact between Amun-Ra and the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh was known as the supreme ruler of the earth. So that was kind of like their contact point. It is a massive. It's about two square kilometers. And then there's also a smaller area, which is dedicated to his wife, Mut, and also north of the main place, like temple. There's another um, area that's dedicated to Mantu, who is the falcon-headed god of war. So to get in there, you walk down the Avenue of Sphinxes. <laughs> and it is... So the construction of this temple was like 4,000 years, and it took 2,000 years to build, like to complete. But yeah, it's amazing. So you walk down, and there's like huge sanctuaries there, temples, statues, obelisks, pylons, pillars... And then all the pylons um, or pillars, they have like the hieroglyphics all the way up and down them and around. And, you know, so they, they kind of depicted scenes of the time. And then there's a, the Great Hibasal Hall, and that is west of the main sanctuary. And that is just huge. It's like 103 meters by 52 meters. And there's 134 columns there. And the, the 12 largest are 21 meters and they kind of support the, the main structure of the, the hall. And then you go to the Khonsu temple, which was dedicated to Amun-Ra and Mut's son, Khonsu. <laughs> and that was built by Ramsey III. Uh, so yeah, so I just spent about an hour and a half walking through there, taking some photos. Just, it was just amazing. I mean, back then it only cost me less than $2. Uh, nowadays, so 2020, it's about $15. So it's still a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> then after there, I went to the Luxar Temple. And that's kind of the opposite end of the Avenue of Sphinxes. And I guess they used back in the old days, they used to be connected, but it's been broken. So you just it's not far. And yeah, so I went to the Luxar Temple. And again, that's very impressive. Um, not quite as big. But it is, it again has like hieroglyphics, uh, like all covering all the walls. And there's lots of color, like it's still quite vibrant color, which is just crazy thinking. It's like, yeah, two, well, between two and 4,000 years old. Yeah, it took hundreds and hundreds of years to build. And King Tut, actually, he finished building it. And then uh, Ramses second he added to it basically and also one of the apostle halls it was uh, later on like 100 years later it was turned into a christian church and then a coptic church i'm not sure what the difference is there <laughs> and there's also a uh, shrine to alexander the great there and this temple has like 14 52 foot pillars and then there's an outer courtyard uh, surrounding the temple and Ramsey too, he's the one that added. And of course, he just added it with lots of statues of himself. <laughs> As you do when you're a pharaoh, why not, I guess? <laughs> so again, yeah, there's just like these huge pillars there with hieroglyphics all around. And there's a pair of obelisks. And then there's one super tall pylon, which, uh, you, like, it, again, it's just amazing how they built it. Because it looks like it's made out of one piece of yeah, sandstone or lime rock. <clears throat> I used to think it was marble, but no, that was like other places I've been to. So, but yeah, it, you can't see the seams of where they put the different pieces together. It's just incredible how smart the Egyptians were. I mean, we, you know, we've been to the pyramids already, both Giza and Saqqara. And then here, it's just kept blowing my mind. Like I'm walking, you know, down, walking down the avenue of the Sphinxes, like just, just sounds cool. <laughs> and then thinking back, wow. 4,000 years old like how many other like pharaohs and nobles and everything you know walked down here throughout the generations it's, it's pretty cool uh, so yeah so then I just kind of went back to the hotel caught up with everyone else I think they didn't do anything <laughs> they just lounged around all day it was a, it was a really cool day so the next day day 78 
uh, again, I got up early about 730, had some brekkie, and then I was like, I, I really enjoyed my day to myself yesterday, so I'm going to do it again today. So I went and rented a bike, which was like just over a dollar for the day. And, I, you know, I spoke to some, some local people and they're like, okay, yeah, just because like, looks so there's two sides. So, so there's the, the West Valley and the East Valley. So I, the day before I'd spent in the East Valley. So now I was going to the West Valley. Uh, yeah, so I just crossed this, the, the, there's a local ferry and it was like one Egyptian pound. So 30 cents and, you know, it takes you across and then just, yeah, got on my bike and headed off to the Valley of the Kings. <laughs> and back then it was only... So right there, there's, so there's the Valley of the Kings, and then there's the Valley of the Queens, and then there's the Tombs of the Nobles. Those are like the three main sites. And back then, it only it cost me less than five bucks to see everything. Uh, so nowadays, it's like 240 Egyptian pounds, so it's about $16. And that gets you inside three tombs at Valley of the Kings. <clears throat> So still a very good deal, I think. <laughs> so anyway, so on my way biking to, or down the, you know, t toward the Tomb of the Noble, this local guy kind of flagged me down and, you know, started chatting to me. And, uh, oh, by the way, my story for that day was that I was married. My husband was at home, like in the hotel sick. So I just decided to, you know, go out by myself. And my one-year-old son was being looked after by my mom back in Canada when we were just on like a two-week holiday. <laughs> When you're a solo woman, I advise to have some stories that sound realistic <laughs> lined up for you. <laughs> it do doesn't help too much, but it does help a little bit. So this guy, he was like, well, I can show you a shortcut to Valley of the Kings. Otherwise, you're going to have to bike nine kilometers around the mountain. I don't know. Very important to listen to your gut. Gut instincts are always right. And my gut said, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. <laughs> And he turned out to be a really nice boy, actually. <laughs> so we hit our hid my bike under some bushes, and he's like, "Okay, this is the shortcut." Well, the shortcut was climbing the mountain. <laughs> Instead of going around, we're gonna go up and down. Oh my gosh, I was sweating buckets, and it, I was just in my tevas, like my you know kind of flip flop things, and it was just super sharp rocks, and of course lots of loose gravel, like loose rocks. But you know, he was like dancing up it and uh anyways i followed it up got up to the top and wow what a view i mean it was amazing and no one really did that like all the tourists were down the, you know by on the road <laughs> normal people would probably do but the view so i could just see the whole valley of the kings it was a it was an incredible view so it was definitely worth the hike so then we went you know got down the other side of the mountain into the valley of the kings and i went into like, I don't know, three or four tombs, including King Tut's tomb, which is really cool. But my favorite tomb was, uh, this is the third, sorry. Doesn't look like it's even open these days. Because uh, there's like 65 excavated tombs there. And they reckon there still could be hundreds buried. But depending on when you go, like certain tombs will close because they're doing, you know, try to fix them, renovate them, whatever. Right now, like 2020, there's about um, eight tombs open. So like I said, with your entrance fee of uh, 16 bucks, you get into go into three tombs. Although there's three tombs that are um, like the best tombs, basically you have to pay extra. It's not too, I mean, like one of them, Ramsey, to, Ramsey the third or something, I think that was a, just an extra 100 Egyptian pounds. The coolest one, like Seti, is a thousand extra Egyptian pounds. And then King Tut's is 300. Like I said, it's about 16, 15, 16 uh, Egyptian pounds of the dollar. So you can pay extra to go into those. But the, so the one I went in, so yeah, so you had to climb a lot of stairs, which are like, were carved out of the side of the lime, the limestone mountains. So you climbed all these stairs and then you had to descend in like three flights of stairs into the tomb. It was so cool. Being in a tomb, I was like, built for a pharaoh from 3,000 years ago. Like, just blew my mind, basically. And a lot of the um, the tombs, were, you know, well, the once upon a time, not definitely when I went, they would be, f like, filled with... So, like, sorry, so all the tombs around, like, all the walls are, are decorated with beautiful murals and hieroglyphics and very brightly colored. 
Um, and then they'd also be filled with like all sorts for their afterlife, right? So they fill with furniture, food, statues, boats, so they could sail to the other side. Uh, and of course, jewels. And like Howard Carter, he just he discovered King Tut's tomb. Oh, 22, 1922. It was just completely covered in gold. And the reason why the they kind of moved from because before they used to be buried in like kings were buried in the pyramids. The reason why they moved to Valley of the Kings was because it was a very remote valley, um, like in an ancient valley. Uh, because when they were in the pyramids, people used to steal from them. Like they would get the, the you know people break into the pyramids and steal all the valuables in there. So that's why they kind of took them to this hidden Valley of the Kings thousands of years after they built the pyramids. But yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, so after my three tombs there, I uh, climbed back that over that mountain at like midday, super hot, boiling, and then found my bike, said goodbye to my little guide, dude, uh, gave him a tip, and then <clears throat> biked to the tomb of the nobles. So there, they were more near the, near the river, like near the Nile, because they weren't as... There's not, there wasn't as many valuables in there, but they reckon there's like 500 tombs in, in the tomb of the nobles. And then my favorite noble tomb was, um, Senaphore. And it, again, just the inside it was so beautiful. The murals and the hieroglyphics and so bright and colorful. Like it could have been painted yesterday. It was just incredible that you're thinking, oh no, it's actually two, 3,000 years old. <laughs> But I guess being in these chambers, like especially when I'm stuck, you know, it preserves everything in there so well. Hence the pyramid, uh, the mummies as well. So yeah, so after I, you know, had a little wander around the tombs of the nobles, I then went, okay, well, I definitely have to check out the Valley of the Queens. Yes, Queen! <laughs> so I biked over there and there was only two tombs open. So uh, and I, there was hardly anyone there, but there was... I, there was a, I kind of tagged along with this family from Colorado because uh, they had paid for a guide. And so I just kind of was like, oh, do you mind if I join you? <laughs> and then they offered back sheesh, like a tip um, to get another tomb open, which they got done. So we got to go to three tombs. So that was pretty cool. The, probably the most famous tomb there is Queen Nefertari. And that is, if you wanted to go see that, then that's an extra thousand Egyptian pounds. Uh, so yeah, so after, you know, I queened it up in the valley, I <laughs> headed over to Ramsey's Three Temple. I think I biked there again. And that's also called a, no, otherwise known as Medinet Habu. And it's very similar to Karnaka, where I was the day before, but it's across the side of the Nile. And that's 500 feet long. And again, it's surrounded by <clears throat> like a mud wall enclosure. And inside there's all these different chapels. Like it is, like it is the biggest open air museum in the world. It's just incredible. So it was about sunset and I ended up get, just getting the local ferry back, uh, took my bike back, went to Happy Land, <laughs> uh, got some dinner and literally just went to bed. <laughs> I was exhausted. I probably biked about 20, at least 20, 25 kilometers that day. Plus climbed a mountain and up and down and just, you know, walking in the valleys, both, you know, all three of them. Uh, so I guess nowadays they have a tram in the Valley of the Kings. <laughs> That's super helpful. <laughs> uh, I think it's only about 30 cents or something for Egyptian pounds. So there you go. Day 79, uh, we got the train back at 1.30, back to Cairo. Got into Cairo about 10 p.m. at night, so couldn't do anything just you know did the usual back to our home from home select, select hotel just had a shish pipe probably went to the falafel cafe again had dinner and then crashed with the hopes that tomorrow okay please let our Sudanese visa be ready it's been now three over three weeks but of course you're gonna have to wait till next week to find out if we got the bloody thing <laughs> however before we go I'm gonna give you uh Tam's top tips Okay, so tip number one would be for looks. You can either book a guide to do both sides of the Nile, one or the other, or you can um, get a, it's called like they have a Luxor Pass, which is 100 US dollars or $50 for students. And that gets you into everything. 
except the extra, you know, the more expensive tombs. So you still have to pay on top of that. Or you can get the Luxor Premium Pass, which is $200, and that gets you into everything. All the tombs, everything. So it really depends how much you want to do or see, you know, especially with the extra cost of the tombs. Because Volley of the Kings, it was just $16. Karnak was, I think, 10 or something. So it's not like the thing, or 15 maybe. So the things aren't that expensive to see, but you'd still save money. If you're going to do what I did, which I saw mostly everything, then the hundred dollar one is probably worth it for sure you'd save some money or like i said you can do a guide or just do what i do like the independent local that was the cheapest and i'm all about cheap like budget because <laughs> i much rather travel longer and stay in you know cheaper hotels or eat cheaply you know still good food local food but yeah i much rather have the time and the experiences than staying in posh hotels or you know, paying for guides and stuff like that. <laughs> That's just me. Okay, so that'd be tip number one. Uh, tip number two, they now, I I would, would I think it would look really cool, but they now have a, a light and sound show at the Valley of the Kings, and it's only $5 more, like if you just did the normal entrance, so it's 16 bucks, so it'd be $21, and you get that the light show as well. So that would be pretty cool to see, I think. And also, don't go to any, like Karnica... Valley of the Kings, and it is between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Because it's just inundated with, that's when all the <clears throat> the group tours come, and it would just be so packed and ridiculous. And remember, going inside these tombs, it's very narrow. <laughs> so there would probably be a queue, I imagine, when there's, because I still think they get like, well, obviously now with COVID, but normally four to 5,000 visitors per day. So it's still quite a lot. So if you could go, it opens at 6 a.m. And it I think it's open uh, till 5 p.m. So early morning would be great with the sun, like for photos and stuff, or later in the day. So that would be my tip number two. Tip number three would be barter for everything. <laughs> Especially in Luxor. It was ridiculous. Like even for bottled water. Because we've been, I'd been in Egypt now for... I don't know, four weeks. So I knew the prices of things. Uh, and fair enough, I understand when you're more touristy place, it's going to be up more. And I understand we have more money than local people too. So I'm cool with paying a reasonable about reasonable, reasonable amount more, but don't take the piss. <laughs> so I would say always, whatever the price they say, like go about at least half, if not a third, and then you bargain, right? And it's part of their custom, like it's part of their culture. It's not insulting unless you have lots of money then fine <laughs> pay what you want because they'll need it right any money extra greatly appreciated i'm sure and then for my solo female travel tip i would say yeah have your story concocted if you are you know obviously solo traveling um perhaps wear a wedding ring obviously dress appropriately definitely shoulders and knees well, like long shorts, if they just come above your knee or skirts is okay, but definitely shoulders covered. <clears throat> you don't have to wear a headscarf. It's not that strict. Um, and also like I found, I mean, Luxor was the worst for cat calls and just nonsense. Like when I went to Karnaka, like I just had my Walkman on just so I could ignore them. <laughs> so I'd had enough. I was like, okay, really? Like have you never seen a woman before? <laughs> like good thing I wasn't blonde, blue eyed and beautiful, Jesus would have been a nightmare uh, I mean it might have been calmed down a bit by now I'm not sure uh, but also stand your ground if you do you can ignore cat calls and all that kind of crap right but if they physically touch you like my Cairo episode where I threw some punches as well through one punch <laughs> then um, you don't have to necessarily punch them but make a scene like shout at them you know make a scene because they know it's not right and uh, you will get people around that will understand that and kind of embarrass him and maybe he'll think twice about doing it again so but besides I mean I, I did you know it was okay Egypt out of the 76 countries I've been to Egypt was the worst for for sexual harassment by far but I lived through it and like I said kick him in the balls if you have to <laughs> okay well I think that's a wrap for today so yeah tune in to next Thursday to find out if we got that Sudan visa site of course the website's there manyroadstravel.com still working on that and of course you can find me you can support the podcast by buy me a beer 
Uh, but you can also find me on social media, like just Many Roads Traveled, Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube channel, working on that too. Uh, but yeah, Many Roads Traveled, I am there. Two L's in the Traveled, of course, for my American friends. Okay, so until next Thursday, safe travels, one road at a time.